guys, welcome back to another episode of Behind the Look. I'm your host Michelle and today we are with the lovely Carly. Hey everyone. <laughs> How are you going today Carly? Yeah, good actually. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, we're going to jump straight into it. What kind of look do you like to do um, for today? I feel like I always just go for like a natural bronzy look, but mm. do whatever you want. I see you have lots of different eyeshadows. Ooh, so. <laughs> so just let yeah, me play, play around. around. <laughs> cool, easy. So I'm going to go in with Mecca's Bring It On Illuminating Primer so we can have that glow. Do you wear makeup often? Um, not as much these days. Mm. I feel like I try to have a good skincare routine yeah. and then just use like face tan water or like the Bali Body BB cream mm -hmm. throughout the week and then yeah, usually just want to go out. Yeah. And what about like, because I know you go on a lot of holidays as yeah. well. Do you usually just make sure the skincare is on point and then you don't need to stress about makeup? Yeah, I was pretty good with that on my most recent trip. Um, even if I was drinking or got home really late, mm -hmm. I still did like my whole nightcare um, skincare routine. So that helped my skin stay good during the trip. Where was it? Was like you went to Coachella, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, how was that? Yeah, it was really good things. Um, like lots going on though. It was so hot during the day. Um, like 45 degrees mm. in the daytime, but like it was for the weekend, the oh, day are. That was really brilliant. cool. So yeah, each night was really cool um, with a pretty big act and the weather was better at night time to enjoy it. Mm. Now obviously those trips like America and where else have you been? Like you went somewhere recently? Uh, well that was my big trip, so yeah. Um, yeah, started with Coachella, that's why we went that time of the year, yeah. so April. And then um, went to Mexico as well. Mm. And then, yeah, New York, back to LA. So yeah, it's gone for a month. Wow. And before you went, did you save up like a lot of money or do you have projects that you can work on while you're traveling? Um, yeah, I wasn't working for the whole month, so oh, I just okay. saved up before I went and um, very broke now. <laughs> Literally <laughs> came back and was so broke. Um, but yeah, everything is just double the price there. Mm. It's like it was really good, but I feel like by the end of it when you're I feel like struggling a bit with my money. It's just like it, I was pressing like no tip. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. It, but because of everything, even just like a coffee, mm. you have to do tip tax, and then the exchange rate, and it comes out of your bank account like double. Yeah. So yeah, that wasn't the best part, but um, I feel like that's like everywhere, even Europe. I've realised sort of similar. Yeah, that's a lot of time double now. Mm. So if anyone comes to Australia, it's a lot better. Yeah. So this year as well, we saw that you were a finalist, was it for Miss Universe? Or? Miss World, yeah. Miss World. Yeah, what so was that like? um, I am a national finalist still, it's still going. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so that was um, the state final that you probably would have seen. Yeah. Just before I went away, so it was, that was a busy week. Yeah. I literally had the state final and then I left for America the week after. But, so yeah, the actual national final will be in August. Wow. And then someone will be 2023 winner. Mm -hmm. It'll be like Miss Australia. And then get to go, I don't know, we, this year or the year after to compete against all the countries. That's crazy. And you, that means like you could potentially be that person. Well, yeah, someone will win. So yeah. there's a few from each state. Yeah. And yeah, so um, there's still, I think, Queensland this week or next week. So mm -hmm. not all the finalists have been confirmed yet, but. okay. But you've been confirmed. Yeah, so Victoria's been, been gone already, so... That's so cool. Yeah, so got that coming up. <laughs> Do you get nervous, like, walking on that stage or, like, just this whole process? Yeah, I was getting a bit nervous beforehand, but then somehow I pulled through on the night and then spoke well, which was good, because I feel like if you stuff up in that first introduction, yeah. they're obviously going to remember who speaks well. Mm. And I was third, so... Um, wow. That was probably a good time to go out because first is a bit like nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. I did a Queensland competition last year. That was another title, Miss Tourism. Yes, and I, I saw that one. Yeah, so I came, was it fourth or fifth? Um, runners up for that one, and then I had to go first, so it was mm. a bit scary when you have to go first. But yeah, third was good. So hopefully, if I um, go from like third to ten, mm. that'll be a fine way to go through. Yeah. And what, like, um, what do you need to prepare for those types of, what is it, like pageant? Yeah, so, or? yeah, it's a pageant, um, like in the pageant world. Yeah. But, so the first thing you have to do, well, it's for our competitions, is 
uh, introduction, so usually you just say three facts or mm -hmm. try to say something more interesting compared to what everyone else will be doing. Yeah. And then the second thing is walking in a gown. And then the third thing is the question and answer, which is always the scary part. Mm, is but, it similar to this sort of thing? Well, yeah, they'll just ask you like a complete random question. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so um, I got something about like Anzac Day, um. the like relevance or how young people are going mm. out the night before and then obviously can't make it to the dawn service and everything. Yeah. So I kind of just worded it around that. But it's best to keep it short and sweet. Mm. Otherwise, um, you can go on and on and then... Yeah. <laughs> Ramble. Yeah. What would be your advice to people who are interested in doing um, pageant work? And yeah, I feel getting like into it? definitely like just apply. I feel like that's yeah. what I've kind of always done. And then um, even if I don't um, get through um, or win, I guess, there's only going to be a winner for the next one. I would say just keep doing it until you get there. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's what I'd probably do. Like obviously I want to keep going with all this stuff. So if this year's not my year, then I guess I'll just have to keep going. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, you basically just apply. Yeah. And then there's like a few different rounds um, to get to the top round. And did you always want to like do this from a young age or like where did it start? Um, well, no, I did a different one a few years ago before COVID. Ah. And then I can't remember if they approached me or not first. Yeah. But then, um, you just like put the application through and then kind of just went from there. So then now I've kind of got, got into it basically. You've got the experience yeah. now. Yeah. So I feel like it's, yeah, practice as well, mm. which is good. Definitely after each one, you feel more confident mm -hmm. and it does really help your confidence and everything. I feel like, um, I have bad anxiety as well. Oh, so yeah. I feel like it's definitely been good to yeah. kind of keep at these things and and help you to, like does it help you get into more of an uncomfortable sort of point so then you have to sort of push yourself forward yeah or? yeah basically you just uh, I feel like it's definitely good confidence building mm. and um with modeling and public speaking yeah. and everything it's all just practice which is good so when you say that like it helps with your confidence, were you before all this, were you, did you find that you were a naturally confident person or? Um, I feel like I definitely was really confident growing up as a kid, mm. but then obviously when you go through high school and yeah. face like challenges Adelaide, yeah. and like, um, I feel like there's like bullies and all that yeah, that's during true. high school, I feel like you can obviously shut your confidence down a little bit. Mm. Um, but now I feel like as a, adult after high school yeah then um you have to try like build that confidence up a bit more yeah so yeah it's definitely like um nice and fulfilling and a fun way to do that and like all the girls as well i feel like i've made close mm. friendships with all of them as well everyone's really nice it's not like i feel like those shows yeah. where everyone's trying to push each other off yeah. the stage yeah yeah, it's not like that, which is nice i did wonder if it was a bit nasty <laughs> yeah no nah, i feel like i guess when I guess at the end of the night, sometimes it's obviously going to be people really happy that they got through. Oh, or yeah. Others that are sad. And definitely in the first year, I did one of the competitions I didn't get through. So I've definitely kind of been in both positions. Mm -hmm. But I guess, yeah, it's the whole just keep going at yeah. a thing. And then you'll get through, like, eventually. Yeah. How do you, like, take rejection like that? Because it's very, like, you're on display, like, as yourself, right? Yeah. So how? Um, I feel like I, I don't know, sometimes I get, like, offended. I don't know if it, I think it is a part, I have ADHD as well, oh, so okay. I think it's a, like a part of that, my brain like doesn't handle rejection that well, right, right. so I think they've always just been um, sometimes a little bit like in my head or overthink things a lot in that certain way, um, but yeah, I feel like you just, I get used to it, mm. and then obviously I've just got through to this round, so mm. it's been more of a positive outcome than um, a negative but yeah, I feel like it just takes practice. Obviously, the people that are kind of at the top with anything, competitions yeah. and um, things like that, they obviously got heaps of rejections at the start. Mm. But it's like, um, there's a saying, it's like every time that someone says no, you're just one step closer to a yes. Yeah. So it's almost like that sort of thing. I didn't know that you had ADHD. Yeah, I got, um, I feel like I always thought that. So I got 
diagnose it mm. la last year, I think it was last year, but um, I was starting to take medication for that, but then because of my anxiety, yeah. it was too like in the way to just take that by itself. Uh. So I've literally just started a few days ago um, taking my anxiety medication, mm. so like, I need to get this sorted because I was getting like bad panic attacks and um, on my trip as well. Oh, but yeah. so I feel like yeah the last few weeks I feel like even being back hasn't been the best for me okay I need to start the medication so I started mm -hmm. that a few days ago um it's, I've only been taking like half a dose so right. can't really say if it's working or not yet but hopefully the next few weeks yeah it kicks in and I'm feeling good <laughs> are there other ways for you to like help your like help calm your energy like um, other than medication well I feel like I really waited it out this whole time mm. and because of my ADHD as well I want to be able to maybe take that medication and I couldn't just yeah. by itself um, so I feel like I just want to be productive and living mm. my best life so yep, I feel like into that <laughs> yeah and I feel like I've tried like lots of natural things definitely like um, exercising I try to the my gym classes mm. that kind of keeps me like sane every day yeah to start my day off doing that so I feel like little things like that but I think yeah now it was time to start medication and start bettering my mental health a bit mm. are you one to naturally sort of feel okay talking about this yeah. topic yeah because yeah. there there is like sometimes there are stigmas and then I think nowadays like people are getting more comfortable talking about yeah yeah yeah, I feel like I'm fine. I feel like I'm pretty big oversharer. That's probably yeah. part of my ADHD as well. <laughs> like really big oversharer. Yeah. So I feel like I'd probably like tell everything to the world anyway. <laughs> did you think like when you once you got diagnosed, did it make everything make sense? Or yeah, I feel like it's still really frustrating. I feel like in school, um, yeah. definitely like studying was always like more difficult mm. and even with reading I always have to because I like reading I bought all these books in ISO mm. but I still haven't even read half of them yet oh. but um so I bought I must buy the audio books and then read like both at the same time yeah because otherwise my brain just like literally can't. oh can you do that like as in read and then listen oh like, the I probably time. should be doing it at the same time but I just sometimes I like, could just be in the car put the yeah. like audio book and listen to a few chapters and then just read the next few chapters that way when I read the chapters my brain like comprehends it a lot easier <laughs> otherwise I'll just read it and just forget the page yeah true so it's more just like little things like that and then um like with tasks as well I feel like sometimes it goes like out one ear wait in one ear out the other <laughs> yeah stuff like that I feel like is a bit more difficult um especially being older and like working and learning new things yeah it can sometimes be a bit hard to understand do you share much about your um, ADHD on social media? Not really. I feel like I, I've always kind of wanted to start talking about yeah. it more like that and like mental health and anxiety more. Mm. So I feel like definitely um, I posted, I got like some good feed, feedback. feedback. Yeah. When I was away, I kind of just said on my story how I wasn't. Um, doing the best uh -huh. like mentally and like obviously it looks like I'm having the best time on my holiday right, yeah that's true so I feel like yeah I just wanted to be like remember Instagram what just like see. a highlight reel mm. because like obviously I'm not going to be posting that day probably like bawling my eyes out the floor yeah 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 <laughs> so I feel like yeah that could be a good way to kind of start talking about it more so I'm just going to prime the lids with the MAC paint pot because speaking of social media I, we've been mutual friends for quite some time, like throughout our high school life. How, how has your social media sort of developed? Like, because I can see that you're getting, you know, sometimes like work from it as well. Like, is that a whole new area that you didn't really expect? Yeah, I feel like when I was younger, I just basically started posting what I was doing and it kind of grew from there mm. and then going to like cafes taking photos working with small brands and then yeah basically just started building it I think with traveling as well I've always been into traveling and yeah. definitely that's how my following I would say probably grew the most going to like festivals and doing lots of like fun stuff growing up and probably like maybe doing it before mm. other people got the chance to and then people really like engage with like those like, kind of photos and videos 
and I did have my own YouTube yeah. when I was younger as well, so I think all that creative side definitely came out with all making videos and going and vlogging. Mm. But yeah, now TikTok, so... Oh, TikTok's huge. Yeah, it? so I feel like it's just a bit easier to just film on my phone on trips mm. and then can take all the content on the one thing because it was a bit hard whipping out a camera. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, and just trying to enjoy the holiday too. And phones are, like, very good quality now with yeah. their cameras. Yeah, actually, everyone's been... I think I want to start... I found my vlogging camera the other oh, day. Oh, yeah. Everyone is, like, trending these days taking photos with the, oh, the camera yeah. I have. yeah. Is it the Canon? Yeah, yeah, I have that camera. So I'm like, I need to whip it out and start that. taking some cool flash photos. Definitely. Yeah, because I feel like at night time, definitely cameras do show up with that better, mm. like, HD quality. So I'm like, I think this weekend I might bring it out. Yeah. And take some photos. But yeah, with work as well, um, on social media, I feel like at the moment it's a bit more inconsistent for me. Because, mm. um, yeah, it's not my, like main source of income but I feel like I'm wanting to get into modeling more yeah that way I could have like set jobs each week and then kind of know how much I'd be getting in and out but yeah um yeah social media is a great platform to have a well um, a job through mm -hmm. definitely would be like aiming to have that one day with modeling as well yeah because yeah I feel like um as people probably know like lots of big influencers mm. can definitely like make lots of money yeah. just by taking photos, promoting products, mm -hmm. which is like really cool how that's become a thing. That's yeah, that's something yeah. that can actually be done. And but yeah, I feel like it basically probably all started from when I was younger, just getting like free food at a cafe and yeah. stuff like that, which was definitely really exciting. Being not even out of school and getting <laughs> to do just like fun things like that, or receiving like a favorite package from. Your favorite clothing store. Mm. Do you think that um, you have to sort of be a certain type of person to be an influencer on social media? I mean, I feel like every second person is doing some sort of influencing these days yeah. on social media. Some people, I think, don't really post at all and don't use it as much. But I think everyone who's actively posting, they're doing they, something. Yeah, their following does. Um, I, I feel like Instagram engagements pretty up and down like at the moment mm -hmm. but I definitely think over the last few years lots of people's following has kind of grown mm -hmm. by just showing what they're up to or traveling as well so I think I don't think you need to as long as you're probably sharing as much as possible people will get interested and then want to keep following you mm -hmm. and do you do you like ever attach your worth to that following count is it hard to sort of detach it um, I don't know. I feel like I don't really... I mean, I think I'd probably view them myself the same. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I feel like with my anxiety and stuff too, I wouldn't say I have a I'm like self-conscious person. I think, um, like I think I'm going to always view myself as pretty, like I'm not basic, but, <laughs> but like, um, just like normal. Mm -hmm. Like, so I think, I don't know, even if I went on like a TV show or even one Miss World, I definitely mm. would just probably always think of myself normal. Yeah, which, you stay, like, humble. Yeah, so I think, which is definitely good. Cause, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really think that that would change my opinion on myself, which mm. is definitely good. I don't want to be becoming some, like, really bratty person just because I've got more followers than the next like person. Like, with a big ego. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's good that it's kind of been, not like a slow burn, but... If I do continue to grow and achieve bigger things, then I think I will stay humble. Yeah. And coming on as a guest for Behind the Look, what were your initial thoughts? Um, yeah, I was really excited to just be able to probably share the side that I probably don't get to share as mm -hmm. much. Cause I do try to talk on TikTok and have on before on YouTube, but probably not like an interview style and answer more mm -hmm. personal questions. So. Yeah, I was a bit nervous because I didn't know what I was going to say, but I think now... Yeah, you're doing amazing. Yeah, it's been... Everything's coming out naturally, which yeah, is good. Yeah, in a natural state of flow. Yeah, That's and it's amazing. exciting that you've started doing this because I feel like you're good at makeup and then with everything mental health as well, mm. it's a good idea what you've done to incorporate Thank the you. two. What are your goals for the future? Um, well, yeah, hopefully... 
in Miss World one day. I feel like I wouldn't be doing the competitions if that wasn't mm. obviously up there as wanting to achieve that. So mm. that's why we definitely won. And I feel like, yeah, with my anxiety at the moment, I feel like just kind of having that under control mm -hmm. and just being happy with my like day to day and having good mental health. Do you I feel like it's most important. Um, sorry, what was like that? day to day, do you find it hard to sort of stay consistently happy? Well, I feel like yeah, my mental health has been a bit up and down lately, and then mm. I feel like with traveling too, I think sometimes I'm like, okay, I'll go on this trip and then I'll be happy when I get to this place. Yeah. But I don't think that's the case. I feel like I definitely probably have struggled doing that a lot. I'll be like happy. I'll be like I'll be happy when I go here, or happy when I do this, mm -hmm. and then you reach a destination. Yeah, and then I think, then I get there and don't feel as fulfilled as yeah. I think I should. So I think I need to work on just feeling happy without putting my happiness onto anyone or doing, yeah, being somewhere else. So yeah, I think even after my trip, it's definitely made me think to like just water my own grass, not the grass mm -hmm. is greener somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Have you been in this type of situation before? Like where your mood has felt this way before? Um, I feel like maybe less often, but I think it's more because I've been having bad panic attacks and I think I'll be fine. And, and then when I'm in like that panic attack state, then I feel like I'm not feeling fine. Mm. So I feel like I just want to get to a hopefully like state where I'm not feeling like I'm in that panic attack state more than I should be because I don't want that to be impacting my day or like going on a trip I don't want that have to like be upset yeah. on my holiday and things like that. Is that something you get often, panic attacks? Um, yeah, probably more often lately. That's why I yeah, made the call to start the medication when I got back. Right, so that sort of drew yeah. you into get seeking professional help. Yeah, so I'm like I don't want to be yeah, going on another holiday and feeling like I'm not enjoying the trip. Yeah. And why do you think you didn't sort of reach out for professional help before that time, before that trigger? Yeah, um, well, yeah, I didn't think it was as bad as I thought. Mm. And I think the more frequent panic attacks was just, um, yeah, more, it was like obvious to me that I needed to do something about it. Thank you for sharing that with us. That's okay. Oh, you said about goals. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so basically good mental health. Yeah. And then, yeah. One day, Miss World. World. Slow. And then, I'm trying to think, I always say, like, everything my younger childhood self. Oh, yeah. Um, they kind of keep just doing things that would make, make her proud. Yeah. Or something really exciting. Even just, like, Coachella, that was just um, something that I really wanted to do when I was younger. Mm. So just doing things and taking things off, that would have made my, like, younger self really excited. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> do you do a lot of um, like inner child work? Um, I'm not really. Not really. I kind of. I feel like I try and make a conscious effort mm -hmm. to do things that I like made me happy when I was younger and still stay in that child mentality. Yeah. So keeping things just fun. Fresh yeah. And I mean, I feel like I still feel like I'm mm -hmm. just in high school sometimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like the years are just passing us by. But, like, I still feel like I'm 18. Do you like that the years are passing by? <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm excited to, like, one day have babies and get married and mm. have a house and all that. But then I'm like, we're going to literally never be young again. Yeah, that's true. And, like, we won't be able to, like, go to festivals and do all that when we're older. Could I live your best life? Yeah, I feel like it's just weird to think that this... Like, we've never known an age, mm. like, um, not being young. Like, we only know yeah. the world being young. Literally, we only know it as how we have been yeah. through all our years up until now. Yeah. Mm. What would you say would be the scariest thing you've ever done? Um, oh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like lately, just... It wouldn't be the scariest thing I've ever done. Like, like everything I feel like just scares me. Yeah. <laughs> like when I just overthink things in like a spiralling headspace. Mm. But I'm trying to think what... Um, 
I feel like I've been pretty independent. Um, mm, that's true. I'm a yeah, only child, so I think I've been quite independent from a young age. Yeah. And I mean, I guess traveling, I think when I was 19, I was really determined to go on a big trip by myself. Mm. And I started with one friend mm. and we did the first month together. Mm -hmm. And then she came home and then I was by myself in London for two weeks. And then for the rest of the trip, I met other friends along the way, but there was lots of traveling mm. and different flats that I was doing by myself. So yeah, I was only 19 at that point. So I think that was a pretty big achievement, being young to feel capable to travel on my own. Yeah. Do you think that now you're, you are like way more, like way comfortable doing that now by yourself? Yeah, I think so. After going to America too, it definitely um, made me realize Australia is really safe. Mm. Um, but I was used to it by the end of it walking around by myself. So <laughs> I think now that I've covered quite a few places, I think I would probably feel comfortable traveling by myself probably anywhere now. Yeah. What are you doing at the moment for work? I uh, just still in retail. Oh yeah. Yeah, they are. And then modeling jobs mm. when they kind of pop up. Are you signed to an agency or are you doing freelance? Um, well, I'll just say freelance at the moment. I'm doing it through Miss World. There's another competition that yeah. I'm doing in a month's time. So that's called Top Model. Oh. And then someone actually wins a contract with the agency. That's so cool. So yeah, hopefully that I one. I can see that happening. <laughs> hopefully that one goes well. Yeah. But yeah, more just freelance at the moment. Oh, yeah. Do you like manifest? Because I feel like there's a lot of things that have technically, from an outsider's point of view, has gone right. You know. Yeah, I feel like. Um, yeah, I feel, like, feel like. Yeah, I, I tried to manifest like a lot in the past, and I think my. I feel like some people don't know, like how to manifest. Mm. And there's lots of different techniques and everything out there, but I think the best way that I've kind of manifested things, I guess, is acting like it's already happened. Yeah, and then that's putting a big one, like hey? all the pre-planning into it happening already. I think even if with my trips as well. Yeah. I was like so determined to go to Coachella and then I feel like you just got to work out all the steps and how much to save and all that and then it ends up just happening like really naturally mm. and then all working out because you had already had the idea in your head that it was happening and that you weren't really taking it for an answer. Yeah. Um, there's like this analogy which I've actually said in another episode that hasn't uploaded yet <laughs> um, but it was similar to how... Um, you can sort of phase manifesting as though you're at a restaurant and like you're sitting down and your waiter gets your order and then you just chill and, and you're not stressing about it because yeah. you know that your food and your order is going to come. And that's sort of like the order is a manifestation and the wait is like the universe. Like it will come and we just got to yeah. surrender to it. Yeah, I feel like if you kind of, it's interesting when you get older as well, you can kind of look back on how things have unfolded and they've all kind of aligned mm. like in the perfect timing as well mm. do you trust do you think that like everything does happen for a reason or like in divine timing yeah i feel like everything definitely looking back on things definitely has i feel like the only thing that i feel like i wouldn't be able to understand is probably like death which is mm. i feel like too hard to ever ever think that happens for a reason mm -hmm. so but everything else i think it's like easy to think like that and then it, you do look back on it and then it has worked out for that yeah. perfect reason are you scared of death um uh, i bought this book but i haven't actually finished it mm -hmm. it's called i think it's called journey of the souls yeah and yeah it talks about like afterlife experiences and apparently it's meant to make you feel not scared Mm. But I've never finished it, so I probably should read more of it. But, um, yeah, I don't know, it's okay. weird to think that one day we're just not going to be here. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, what do you think that you want to leave a legacy in a way? Um, I yeah, I don't know, I just feel like I don't want to. That's why I feel like I've tried to do heaps, probably. Yeah. Like, even by this age, so I'm like, we don't really, like, tomorrow's not really ever guaranteed. That's true. So I'm like, I need to, like. I'm not doing that. Yeah, like Coachella and like all these things that I, I mean, I could be like waiting for. Mm. But like no need to do them all now, <laughs> in case. <laughs> do you feel like fear hasn't held you back? Um, yeah, I feel like not really. I think I've always kind of gone after 
what I wanted. Yeah. Because you have done a lot, like, with travel, with, you know, going into pageants and stuff. Yeah. Well, I feel like, yeah, now that we've been out of school for mm, quite, a, a, quite a few years, I sometimes think, I'm like, oh my god, I haven't done anything. Mm. But then I have. I think I need to sometimes just stop and pause. Yeah. And be like, okay, you have done this, achieved this, go on here. Because sometimes I feel like I haven't probably achieved anything. That, like, the inner critic speaking, you know, when you... Yeah, I feel like maybe I'm just that. too hard on myself. Yeah. But yeah, I was even listening yesterday to a podcast. Um, the girls I was listening to, they were saying about a statistic about how I think it's the average Australian doesn't even buy their own ha- first, first house until mm. they're like 36. Yeah. So it's just like, I think... And also back, inflation. <laughs> back again with like the whole Instagram thing. Yeah. I think it's when people post like buying their first house at like 22, then it's like, oh my god, I should have bought a house. Like yeah, now. so it makes you feel as though yeah. you should be at that stage as so well. So I feel like I definitely just need to keep reminding myself and mm. everyone probably needs to as well about there's no like timeline. Yeah, that's right. And no rush as well. Yeah. How do you remind yourself that there isn't a timeline? Um, well, yeah, I feel like you, um, I guess, just got to put things into perspective and have a realisation for yourself that, yeah, you're still, like, I feel like, yeah, we're only in our 20s, so we're still really young. We don't have to have done everything mm. before 30. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes society has put that timeline into place that pressure with like uni getting a job house yeah. marriage kids i mean i guess for us girls we do have like a body clock for that's true for babies but um i feel like everything else there's there's no rush as well mm. so going on about fear how would you help someone who is sort of living in fear and afraid to do the things that they want to do or live up to their potential yeah i probably need this advice myself <laughs> i mean i wouldn't say i'm living in fear it's more just when I get those anxious periods Mm. and then think like or like I'll just be thinking like in a negative headspace and the world is ending type of thing Mm. but I think yeah just doing doing what makes you happy and if you have those goals um kind of figuring out the steps that it's going to take to get there rather than just putting them off I feel like a lot of people probably go through their whole life putting off their goals or staying in a job or staying with like a partner that isn't making them happy but I feel like at the end of the day like your happiness is like the most important thing like Mm. happiness and health so I feel like if things are causing you stress and making you fear like everything then it's just not worth it Mm. so I feel like figuring out even going back to those things that made you happy as a kid yeah and things going back to the root and things like that what would you have wanted to be maybe it has changed but mm. what do you want to be when you like grew up those That's kind true. of things and then yeah going to your favorite place that made you happy as a mm. kid or favorite cafe or restaurant and then I feel like then you'll probably start to get out of that fear headspace yeah and be more happy and is that what you've done like you've visited and reflected back to those times because like from what I see, like, you aren't living in fear. Like, you are just yeah. really killing it, you know? Like, yeah. you're just taking life and just going full on at it, like, head on. So, is that what you've done? Yeah, I think so. I feel like, yeah, just kind of working towards my goals and writing them down definitely helps and reflecting. So, you journal? Yeah, or more like a diary and mm. then writing things in my goals and planning ahead. I feel like it keeps you accountable for things that you have upcoming and not stressing about what hasn't kind of happened. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that routine is like an important thing for you? Yeah, I think definitely so. Just to keep, I mean, I only kind of take a mental note of my week ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's definitely nice to know what you've got on for the week or look forward to. Mm -hmm. I feel like as humans, we take life as per week. Yeah, that's um, true. I feel like, yeah, really people kind of take it as a day by day. It's usually week and the week's over. Because of like how hectic week. life is as Yeah, well, so right? I think, yeah, it's nice to have an organised week and therefore be productive and get things done. Mm. And then, yeah, usually I'll start with, like, the gym and then kind of go from there. What would you say to someone who wants to be productive but finds it hard? Like, how do you 
get productive. Well, I feel like because of my ADHD, I oh, think that's yeah. my like probably the drive. No, that's like my worst like <sighs> thing being not like I feel like I'm not productive. Like that's ah. like the main like everyone who's ADHD they constantly feel like they're lazy. Yeah, right. So like you should have eyes that way. Yeah. Um, like I physically sometimes can't get up to do things. Mm. Like if I didn't have the gym, I feel like I'd just probably not get out of bed. Yeah. Like obviously I'd get out of bed for work and stuff like that. But I think definitely booking in the gym and making sure I go every day, that really sets up my day. Yeah. And I found like that does really help. But otherwise, I feel like I can't do things, especially if it's on my own time and there's no deadline. Mm. I really struggle to get done or procrastinate all day. And then we'll get to like the afternoon, I'm like, okay, I was meant to take photos for this brand yeah. and I haven't done it yeah. because like no one's been there to tell me what to do or what hasn't been booked in. Mm. So sometimes when I yeah have to do things on my own schedule, it can be um, unmotivating. But I feel like as I've got older and I can acknowledge about my ADHD, yeah. I definitely will just be more disciplined. I think it's being disciplined. No one's going to tell you as an adult. Um, me and my mum still tells, yeah. me, tells me what to do at times, make the bed and stuff like that. Thanks, mum. <laughs> but I feel like, yeah, we just kind of got to push ourselves mm. and, like, get up that extra bit early to go to the gym or even if you didn't go that morning, if you really want to go to the gym, mm. go that night mm. and just being disciplined on yourself to get the things you want to achieve in your day. Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. And as we're getting closer to the end of the video, I want to know if you're bigger on self-love and self-care? Yeah, I feel like, um, I don't know if this would mean I'm putting more self-love and care into myself, but being an only child, I feel like it's always kind of been me um, mm. in my household more alone. Yeah. I feel like so I've always had that extra bit of time, I think definitely in lockdown as well. The first lockdown, I was just living with my parents, so I felt like I was always on my own so I'd do those face masks or um, just watch Netflix by myself mm. and do heaps of like things on my own so I think definitely it's really important to sometimes like wind down yeah. and have that alone time I feel like even on trips I really do like to just go for a walk by myself mm -hmm. or even if it's just like meditate or just go to the gym I think having that alone time really does help as an individual to feel good and reflect on your day as well. Mm. And do you think that reflecting is um, a big part of like self-care and self-love? Yeah, I think so. Just to be able to grow. In my diary, I usually do write my monthly goals mm. and then you can look back, especially like even at the end of the year and then when you do like New Year's resolutions and everything, Yeah, you can see what you have achieved and what you want to work on still and that way you can keep growing as a person but yeah definitely self-care like face masks or doing things that you do for other people yeah like putting yourself yeah, so as a priority yeah like on I have a boyfriend now but uh -huh. two, last year or the year before um just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um when I wasn't with him I bought myself a rose and valentine's day oh, <laughs> so I was like I feel like yeah otherwise I love that yeah I feel like and then that's kind of like when I met him as well I feel like I was really into my self-care and just doing things for myself mm. and I was in like a good place on my own yeah and then I feel like that's kind of the timing that you gravitate aligned as well I feel like people do say that when you're yeah kind of thriving on your own that's when you'll end up meeting someone yeah that's true someone asked you how to sort of find their self-worth what would you say like what if they're in a really like dark place and they're placing their worth on someone else, like a partner or something or a yeah. job, like how would you help them to like get out of that and just like realise that their worth is found within? Um, once again, I'm like maybe someone needs to help me with this too. Um, I feel like when I like get upset, I definitely probably spiral and just think, like I feel like my brain's like everyone hates you kind of thing uh. when I get like in those dark head spaces, but mm. I feel like... Um, yeah, I feel like when I'm feeling good, definitely you just got to yeah, do the things that make you happy once again. Yeah, like comes what, back to that. Yeah, like dress up. I feel like dress up. Um, 
Yeah, I feel like in ISO, I was like just not obviously wearing makeup or dressing up. And oh, then yeah, you can be yeah. like, oh my god, I just look terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely, I mean, not that makeup should be a fixing the, point. The thing, but yeah. I think like just doing the things that make you feel good or mm. um, look good or eat something yummy, just things that make you feel good. Yeah. Other things that are gonna, or even just surrounding yourself with good people, all those things are gonna just fill your cup. Yeah. And then that's gonna make you feel good. And then. Not necessarily it should be other people making you feel good, but yeah. obviously if you're surrounding yourself with good people, it's just going to automatically make you feel in a good mood. Mm. And I feel like with validation, I feel like I've never been one to feel like I need people to validate External me. Validation, it's more yeah. just, I think, surrounding yourself with those good people mm. and then noticing people that don't make you feel good. Yeah. And then it's just those people that are the negative people, yeah. not the ones... Yeah, what am I trying to say? Yeah, it's not like you. Yeah. It's those people that yeah. are, say having a bad day. They it's always their projection. Yeah, they're hey. just taking it out on you. So yeah. I feel like at the end of the day, you just got to think people. other people are going through things. Mm. They're not trying to take it out on you. They could just be busy that they haven't replied to your message. Or, yeah. And not kind of spiral is what I probably would do as well. Yeah. So just to, yeah, I think it's not saying, it, yeah, it's them, but like... Just think other people... Not are, taking yeah, things personally. Yeah, not trying to take things personally. Yeah. And just know that other people are going through things as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Because I think that when we do take things personally, that's when, like, we've really, like, been overthinking about the situation, yeah. hey? And that's basically, like, where it can take you into that spiral. Yeah. And then you sort of debate your self-worth and you, the love that you have for yourself and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, I'll spray your face with the Morph... Do you pronounce it Morph or Morphe? Yeah, I say more for you. I've heard people more. say more. But... Right? And to finish off the interview, what would be something that you would want to tell your younger self? Um, what can I say? That you're definitely going to achieve the things that you're wanting to and it definitely will get better. Mm. Just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I reckon she would be so proud of you. <laughs> and here is the mirror for the Thank little... Yeah, amazing. Yeah. I literally feel like you went like I zoned out the whole time. And I'm like, like you didn't realize. And I'm now I'm like I'm just like woken up and you've done my makeup. Oh, it looks so good. Look at you, Yay. so talented. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad. Oh, thank you. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more of Carly, I will link all of her details below. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Bye. See ya.